All right, so I haven't done an update last week, partly because I was feeling like garbage. Um, definitely didn't have coronavirus, but wasn't feeling the best. Uh, been in and out doing little bits and pieces on the Land Cruiser. Not a lot of the stuff at the moment's kind of really exciting for YouTube, like doing air conditioning pipes and bits and pieces like that. I kind of want to just get to the bit where I'm like, hey, and chuck it in gear and drive it. But um, next step will be finishing the diff. So I'll be filming with Darren at uh, Mid Coast Diffs to put that back together, put the diff back in. Then we can get it on a truck to advance headers. And then that's where all the fun starts. But um, I'll run all the stuff, for the update for the Land Cruiser at, at the end of this video. But the reason I started in here, and <clears throat> it's a bit cold today, and I've got the heater in the back corner of the shed there cranking, but rather than doing a video this week on the fire blade I'm building in the background and one on the Land Cruiser, I figured, you know what, it's gonna do like an all round, what the hell's going on with the Hoon TV projects thing. First and foremost, if you haven't seen me bashing it already on YouTube and on social media, this is the three footed monster. This is one of the early prototypes. This is a camera, phone, light, whatever mount. It's magnetic, it's got rare earth magnets in it. I'll show you right now. And if you're doing time lapses or TikTok videos or gym videos or whatever the hell you're trying to do, rather than having a suction cup or a Gorilla Grip or any of that other stuff, it just goes like that and then you move it around and do that. So we've launched hoongear.com. So you can either go on hoongear.com Follow the links at the moment. It's on Kickstarter until the end of June. If you pledge on Kickstarter, it's not like a donation or anything like that. Literally, if you pledge, you get one of them when they ship. Uh, it's just to help get the thing rolling and all that. Plenty of other cool stuff in the pipeline. We've sent a bunch of them out to big YouTube channel guys like Kyle from 1320 Video, um, Mark from Street Effects, other people, Full Boost. They're all in testing them as well. Uh, all the feedback's been pretty good so far. But um, yeah, for what they're worth, uh, it's just a, an extra tool for anyone that wants to do video stuff. Anyway, with the projects, the CBR in the background, put the engine back in with uh, Jake you would have seen in a few videos ago. I've got it running, had it running, but the only problem was is that the carbies were leaking. They'd never really been rebuilt properly anyway, so I'm waiting for a rebuild kit for them. And that's gonna be set of like needle and seats and um, uh, o-rings and gaskets and other stuff like that. Other than that, should be alright. I'm still a bit dubious as to whether the engine's that good, but if it isn't, then I'll come up with a solution instead. Otherwise, the rest of the bike's all good to go. I did go against my original better judgment because they're just so hard to get and got a set of imported fairings for it. They're hit and miss and you can get lucky or you can get super unlucky. I've been both with them. In this case, I was pretty damn lucky. I'm giving away the color scheme now, but I've gone for the US red and silver and black. Um, I'm actually really happy with these fairings. They are, like I've mentioned in the past, they're press molded, not injection molded. So they're not as good as factory, but these ones are probably right up in the top end of aftermarket fairings. And um, the paint job on them's great. Now all I've got to do is take the tank in to get that match locally. I've got a really good friend who's going to do that. And then from there, just a few little last bits and pieces, add some fresh mirrors, indicators, and other bits and pieces, uh, give the calipers a birthday. And then it's gonna be quite a neat bike if the engine's all good. So if the engine's not good, then I'll just pull it down and give it a once over. But um, for a 92 CBR 900, they're um, becoming collector's items. And um, I had one before, sold it, regretted it. So managed to put one together out of spare parts and um, it should be a cool bike. But the other thing, well that bike there, I've mentioned that before on the build, that's the um, Nicky Hayden replica that's a bit of a long termer, but um, once that's done then I'll be getting into that. The other bike over there, that's the one I crashed before, it really just needs a new set of fairings put on it and a paint job. I'll get around that, but there's no hurry because I'm not really riding bikes at the moment, I'm still recovering, I can't even hold a handlebar to let alone ride a bike, so that. But this thing here, is the Falcon, otherwise known as Project XH. I started building this a long time ago. All of my friends and anyone who knows me knows that I've been tinkering away with this ever since I was working for Street Fords magazine. It is a 1997 Ford XH Falcon Ute. Started off as a completely stock street car. We took it to the drags, ran a 16.4. 
uh, with the old original engine, totally stock exhaust, the whole deal. And then it all kind of got out of hand and it got turned into a drag car. It's now got a full atomic 998 kilowatt power engine, GT4788 turbo, E85, massive fuel system, Outtech Elite 2500 computer, trans brake turbo 400, big ladder bar rear end. And I've sort of been through cycles of whether or not on what to do with it, because it's hard, because there's nowhere to drag race here in Adelaide. Right now you can't even travel. But I've decided that I might as well just finish it and have a bit of fun with it. I was thinking about selling it, but then had a bit of a brainwave. It won't get used a lot because it's a car that's not an easy car to do. Wow, it's pissing down rain right now. I guess we'll get it out, have some fun with it and see what it does. I mean, um, I haven't done much on YouTube with it in the past and I've been asked why. And it's just because I was never really motivated enough to want to show people and drag it out forever. But now that the car's pretty much finished, I've had it on the dyno. I did put a dyno video on YouTube. Pretty much done it just needs some finishing touches here and there and some shakedown driving probably a smaller set of radial tires on it and stuff like that but the main thing for me is the barrel market's so massive now and there's so many cars with big horsepower i can't see me wanting to go out there and be the best because to do that it's kind of almost like either you're the best or you just got the biggest checkbook and i don't really care about either of those and i definitely don't have the biggest checkbook um, this car was built over a long time that's why it was built, because I wouldn't be able to build it in 12 months with the sort of budget it takes to build stuff like this. I could have put all that money into buying a house, but you know, I decided to build a car instead. We all do these fun things, so yeah. But you know what, well, it is it is what it is. I was um, totally honored to have the car featured in Street Machine in December last year. And if you're not from Australia or New Zealand, Street Machine is the biggest and bestest and baddest, longest running car magazine in Australia if you're into like the modified car scene so it was a total honor to have my car in that and um i guess you know i can only do the car justice by taking it out and having some fun in it so i guess um as far as this thing goes um watch this space and uh yeah should make lots of loud noises back to work yeah.